Time now, 8.20. Uh, lights, cookers, heating, they're all important parts, of course, of everyday life. But the rising cost of energy is turning essentials into luxuries for some people. The government's held summits with the big, big six energy companies to discuss ways to bring prices down. But could people power actually have more impact? Jenny Hill is in Lincolnshire this morning and she's going to be showing us some croissants as well. Now, the UK has always been known for its changeable weather, but in the space of just a few days, some parts of Britain have gone from drought warnings to flood warnings. This was the scene in Dorset when Louise Hubble reported from there for breakfast just over a week ago. If you'd like to see what that looks like this morning, we can do that right now. Louise, it has changed dramatically, hasn't it? Illustrates it. It is just amazing. Perfect, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, more weather, of course, with Carol coming up. And also the BBC News Channel. Here on Breakfast. Oh. But it's time now to get the news, travel and weather where you are. We'll see you in a moment. Hello, very good morning. This is Breakfast with Charlie State and Louise Minchin. Our main story this morning, Barclays Bank is facing a revolt by shareholders, angry about how much executives are being paid. Police are looking for a man in connection with what they're describing as two brutal murders in the northeast of England. The deputy leader of the Liberal Democrats has become the first senior member of his party to call for an independent investigation into the row surrounding the Culture Secretary Jeremy Hunt. The United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon says he's gravely alarmed by reports from Syria that military forces are still shelling populated areas. Mr. The South Korean technology giant Samsung has posted record profits of over £3 billion for the first three months of this year. The pensions regulator is relaxing the rules governing 300 company pension schemes so that they can deal with serious funding shortfalls. The Queen and Prince Philip will return to the Welsh village of Aberfan today as part of the Diamond Jubilee Tour. It'll be... The fundraising page of Claire Squires, the 30-year-old who died while running the London Marathon on Sunday, is on course to reach a million pounds. That was Nicola Short talking to us a little bit earlier about her friend Claire. And almost a million pounds raised. It is an amazing story. Time now. Thousands of people. Absolutely. 8.35 is the time. Those are the main stories. Here's what's coming up later in the programme. Jaws. Still scared. Oh, no, it's still it's scared. Jumped, out, isn't it? jumped out the skin there. Yeah. <laughs> Never loses its appeal, does it? Well, what have you got for us? Factor. Well, it's actually quite a relief that we're not going to spend the whole weekend asking, will they, won't they? I just remember the build-up to the Luis Suarez, Patrice Evra meeting on the pitch when Suarez snubbed the hand of Evra. And, of course, the headlines that generated, everyone forgets the game, what happened, because they're all talking about this handshake. I know the John Terry Anton Ferdinand case is completely separate, it's still ongoing, but uh, the sting's been taken out of it, really, because there'll be no handshake whatsoever which is a bit of a relief for all around us. Working on the bins as dustman in the East End, and then the call comes, you're in the squad. Get it's to Melbourne. It's an amazing Melbourne. story, isn't it? And yeah. you know for sure that kind of thing doesn't happen anymore. Not, it won't happen again, will it? Can't no, possibly. No. no. And the thing is, he didn't get a, an honour, an award, like, of course, gold medalists tend to do now, until 2002. I suppose in those days it wasn't seemed like for a, a dustman, apparently, to get a, an honour, which had to change, and thankfully it did. But he was finally rewarded, yeah, ten years ago. But just to say... At the premiere this week, Prince William compared it to a soap opera. African Cats tells the story of a pride of lions and family of cheetahs as they fight to raise their young and survive on Kenya's plains. The film took two and a half years to put together. One of its directors, Keith Scully, joins us in just a moment. Before we talk to him, let's have a look at the film. We are used now, aren't we, to amazing photography in connection with wildlife. Mm. You know, the BBC does these incredible series, which I know is your background. Yeah. What is the difference between doing... If you like a, a program which just shows you amazing things you haven't seen before, you know, sequences, and I know some of them are in your film as well, and doing a story, you know, a animals effectively as characters, yeah. which is what you try and do. Well, a bunch of different animals in the wild and try to get a sense of, you know, their, their situation. Absolutely. Their and um, for years... Stupid question, but the very obvious difference between director of a film like this is you can't shoot it again. No. I mean, you can't turn around to your cast and say, you know, we like that bit, but done we a bit differently. That bit. Now, were there, be honest now, were there moments that you missed? What's at cinemas today? Going to stay with uh, movies now. Universal Pictures has been behind many of the most famous movie moments in history. Remember Jaws? Jaws? <laughs> yes. Oh, that Amazing. now. Uh, Universal Studios made, of course, Jaws, King Kong, Schindler's List, Apollo 13, Psycho. We could go on and so on. So many films. And now the Hollywood studio is celebrating a century of filmmaking, so our LA correspondent Peter Bowes has been taking a look at how things have changed over the years.
Oh, some fantastic movies there. They were, weren't they? Uh, it's our last look at the weather now. Carol's there with us this morning. How's it looking for the weekend, Carol? Uh, the reason we're talking about this uh, is that lots of people want quick meals these days, but a new survey suggests lots of young people struggle to cook even the most simple foods. Mm -hmm. Our reporter Charlotte Leeming's at a cookery school in Cheshire this morning where the students have been going back to basics. They've made scrambled eggs. Don't know what they're Anybody saying. Anybody can burn It happens to the best of us. It happens. It happens. Well done. It's like watching Saturday Kitchen. Exactly. Sort of. uh, anyway, uh, so the uh, Christmas tale of Scrooge and the sunshine of Thailand couldn't be more different, but both inspired the songs of our next guests. The British band Honey Rider spent a month on the beach writing their second album. Lindsay, Jason and Matt. And all here. Good morning. Good morning. How are you all? Great. Oh, this we're is, here. We're on the sofa. This is your kind of world, isn't it? Can I just ask? Because you used to work in television, didn't I you? I did. I was, there's various names for what I used to do. I was a script supervisor or a gallery P PA. Right. They call it. So what's going on? Because you were being very curious I talk, just yeah, now. Yeah, I talk in your ears and tell you to shut up. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Quite but not today. Not yeah, no. today. Keep okay. going, keep going. Rider, because if anybody Googles Honey Rider, it's a, it's a James Bond character, isn't it? Yeah, first She was. Very famous. Yeah, it was Ursula Lee and Jason. That some mm -hmm. of it written in different places. Is that how? So we said some of it written on the beach. Yes. Can yes. you can you literally discern the yes. difference from the? This morning, you said the same I said thing, Stevie Nicks. You? That's exactly what it reminded me. Oh, that's a compliment. Thank well, you. that can't be a bad thing. I, I'd can like it? to sell as many albums as they have. Yeah. <laughs> that'd be nice. Yeah. Um, and Marley's Chains. It's what? It's a Dickens reference, is it? It is. It's a reference. Followed you over time. We'll know that. Yes. So how how do you see those changes? Um. Well, we, we, I wrote the first album with a very good friend of mine called Martin Schoen, and he was in the band. It's, the, the album's out now. Are you going to tour it as well? You going? How's, the, how's that? How does that work with gigging with a small child as well? Is that? Well, I do that thing. <laughs> uh, Honey Rider single Marley's Chains is out on Monday. The album is going to be out in July. Time now 9:04. In a few moments, Tony Robertson will be with us, talking to him about his new project, uh, writing history books for children. First, though, here's a quick look at what is happening where you are. Uh, welcome back. Tony Robinson has a history uh, with history. Mm -hmm. He starred, of course, as Baldrick <laughs> in the comedy Through the Ages, Blackadder. He wrote the children's series, made Marion, dug up ancient treasures in Time Team. That's given me more pleasure than anything that you love in times. Oh, we've got another clip, actually. Uh, and Nero and Julius Caesar. You, really, you, you can really let fly as a writer with characters. So we've got, at the moment, there's Romans out, Egyptians. You're going to do Britain as well. You've uh, done yeah, Britain, haven't you? British Empire, doing the Greeks. And I've already been commissioned to write another two next year. I think the idea is that it will be a... I suppose, as far as, as far as British history is con concerned, the, the time that I really want to do is King Alfred the Great, when Britain... When it, it Both out now, the Romans and the Egyptians at this. And try the game online. Game and online. we will see you tomorrow morning on Breakfast. Thanks very much for joining us. Goodbye. <laughs>